Shalom. Welcome to God Day. God bless you all. Thank you for tuning into Revelation TV. I bring you another word, word of encouragement. I thank you, Lord, that the Bible is there before us. And the more we read it, the more we love it. Amen. We pray before the Lord, our God, who's going to help us to understand the scriptures that we're going to open up today. I thank you, our Father, that you're so loving, so wonderful, so teachable. We want to learn from you, Lord. I, you're always teaching us. And I thank you, Lord, that we keep our heart open before you. So, Father, I pray that as I share the word of God, uh, this will be such a wonderful um, promise as, as you make with your people. And those who are looking for a miracle, you will give them a miracle today. I thank you, Lord Jesus, through the scriptures, our faith is uplifted, Father. And uh, there, is, there are things that uh, uh, we're unable to understand with our natural mind. We can understand as we come closer to your word, because your word has life and your word has love and peace and hope. So we thank you, Lord, that we can come to you, draw to you through your word. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, I ask you to help me. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. It's true, the word of God always helps us. And I pray today's uh, um, uh, uh, verses, that today's uh, uh, Bible reading will also help us understand. And you know, uh, it's true, the Lord speaks to everyone um, uh, uh, on their, uh, you know, t t according to their understanding where they're, they're at. And, and we've read this uh, passage, we've read this story that I'm going to share with you, Elisha and the widow's oil. I'm going to share that with you. And I've titled it today, uh, The Oil of the Soul. The soul which is here, and do we have oil in it? So we'll uh, check it out as we go through the scriptures. So I'm starting uh, with the chap uh, Second Kings chapter four, uh, um, verse one. We will read from one to seven, and this one uh, talks about the widow who had a little bit of oil and uh, how she was uh, rescued with just that little bit of oil, uh, her provision came. Uh, so whatever you have today, just lay it aside, and this, the scriptures will give us the understanding how we can receive our provision our miracle and how we can come out of a difficult situation with the help of Yahweh. Amen. Now the wife of one of the sons of the prophets cried to Elisha, your servant, my husband is dead and you know that your servant feared the Lord, but the creditors have come to take my two children to be his slaves. And Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me what you have in your house. And she said, your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, go outside, borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty vessels and not too few. Then go in and shut the door behind yourself and your sons and, and pour into all these vessels. And when one is full, set it aside. So she went from him and shut the door behind her herself and her sons. And as she poured, they brought the vessels to her. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another. Then the oil stopped flowing. She came and told the man of God, and he said, go tell, sell the oil and pay your debt, debts, and you and your sons can live on the rest. That is the blessed word of the Lord. So we've heard this story many times that how this widow uh, goes to a, a prophet. Now, um, if we look at it, it's, a, it's really um, quite interesting and it's beautiful to, if we want to understand it because this will help us with the situation that we currently could be in. And that's the whole idea of reading the word of God is to build our faith uh, and to come out of complications that uh, may be created uh, around us, in us, or in, 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 in someone's life, and we can help them. So the story is this this lady, and she's a widow, that's how it begins. Um, that, and, and how she addresses herself um, is, is really wonderful, and that's where uh, I will um, uh, reveal that a little later. And she says that, uh, your servant, my husband, is dead. So obviously, the prophet that she's gone to, first of all, you know, she's, she's, uh, um, there's, a, uh, there's a, a poverty kind of situation that's come upon her. And so whatever she's had, um, she's sold everything in the house. Uh, she's got nothing left to feed her children on. And on top of that, um, you know, she's got two sons and the, and the people that she owes money to uh, uh, want to come, come and take the sons away so that, um, you know, they could be sold into slavery. So you can imagine a mother's nightmare. Uh, number one, she's a widow. Uh, she doesn't have a husband. Then she has 
realized the responsibility of these two sons. And now she's having like sleepless nights. She doesn't know what to do. And only if she could get some money and pay her debtors off. And it's a huge debt. It's not a small amount uh, that she can uh, just, uh, uh, you know, by working um, um, a few hours that she can get that sort of money. But obviously the times are hard. Uh, there's hardly any work. There's a lot of uh, possibly famine. There's a shortage of food. Uh, all things are not good uh, at that moment. And this, this woman, this widow, is just struggling with herself. She's having sleepless night. I don't know how many times she must have cried. She feels so helpless. She looks at her sons, and she cannot bear the thought of losing them into slavery, which means she will never, ever see them again. And, and her debtors are just troubling her. And she's scared the, the debtor could come and knock on the door any time and take those sons away from her. So she's thinking on a plan. At this moment, if we can understand that what is it is in her in her soul, which is, which is what is in her heart? What is it that she wants to do? Should she be looking to God for her provision? Um, and and she is, she's, uh, she's a woman who knows God and, uh, and she was married to somebody who was, you know, who, who followed God. So um, what should she do? At this moment, she comes up, obviously God, uh, you know, uh, feels distant from her. She feels he's far away from her. She feels abandoned. Her prayers are not the prayers that she used to pray. And she cannot think clear. Um, She's so focused on her, on, on her debtors, on her problems, that she cannot communicate with God. So she, she's, what is she's filled her heart with? That's what we're looking at today. The oil represents the Holy Spirit. So what is it in her heart? Does she have the Holy Spirit's help? Does she have God? Does, has she given her heart fully to the Lord so he can help her through this difficult situation? Remember the word of God says he never leaves us, never forsakes us. But this lady, this woman, she's so desperate, but she doesn't know what to do. So she gets an idea. What she will do is, she doesn't think she's going to go to her relatives or uh, because there's no mention of that, but I'm sure she had them. But she thinks she'll go to a man of God and she thinks of Prophet Elisha. Of course, she knew him because in the beginning she says, your servant who is dead, you know, she refers to her husband. And, uh, and she said that uh, I'll go to him and ask him, I'm sure he will help me help me in this situation because he's a man of God and of course Elisha had uh, um, Elijah had done so many miracles Elisha had also done miracles so these things were known that these was the holy men that they feared God and if they prayed God would answer their prayers so all this in mind she goes to Elisha and she says, uh, I'm desperate. She goes, he, he, she goes to the to the prophet I'm, I'm just saying this is what she must have said look uh, you know I need your help and he looks at her because he's a man of God. He will look at her. He's listening to what she's saying, the pain that's coming from her heart. And, and, and by the time she finishes her story, by the time she tells him that I need money and I need your help and there's no one else I can turn to. You're a man of God. I know you can help me. And the prophet is looking at her and he's looking, of course, uh, because the prophet is filled with the Holy Spirit. Now God is speaking through Elisha and he says, it's very genuine what you're saying. I see your heart. I see what you're feeling. But this love and fear has overtaken you. The love in her heart, he sees that, he discerns that, that there is love for her children and she has a fear, you know, of the enemy. But it should be the other way around. So the so the Elisha, Prophet Elisha must be saying, listen, you know, first of all, you need to fix your heart because you should have love for the Lord and you should have fear of the Lord. And then all these things can, you know, you instead of working it out with your own head, the Lord uh, in his mercy will send you help. So anyhow, she says, give me some money, give me some money. And he goes, I'm a prophet, you know, mostly prophets, they, they, they prayed and fasted and they did not accumulate possessions uh, like, you know, other people would do. Uh, and they would be moved from one place to another as the Holy Spirit would lead them. God's Spirit would come upon them and they'll go from one place to another. And they were never like interested in their own personal life. They would be looking out for the benefit or the better of the nation or the people around them. So obviously, Prophet Elisha is appointed at this time uh, to help this widow. And he goes, look, you know, I can't create a miracle. I can't create money. I haven't got a machine here that I can print notes for you. I cannot give you money. But she says, please, she said, you can only help me. You knew my husband. He was your servant. You know, he, you knew him so well. He was so faithful because he, yeah, her husband was faithful. And but he died at a very young age. And she goes, you can help me. He goes, I cannot help you the way you're asking me to help. You know, sometimes we, we we're telling God what to do instead of 
uh, instead of God telling us what to do. We should be listening to him, taking direction from him, but we are giving him direction. She's saying she only sees the only way out of her, her problem is if she can have some money to pay her debtors. But Prophet Elisha says, he said, look, I don't have money and I cannot give you money, but what you have, what do you have? And she says, I have nothing, I've sold everything. I've got nothing left. The only thing I have left is now a jar of oil, a little oil in a jar. That's all I have, a little pot in the house, and that's all that remains there. Then he says, well, God will have to do a miracle with that. We'll have to ask the Lord to give you a miracle from that oil because that's all you have. It's what we have, it's what we possess. God can turn that around. God can multiply that. That's what we need. we're learning here. So Prophet Elisha said, well, well, you know, I know you're looking for a miracle and I believe that the Lord will help you. He wants to help you. It, your cause is very genuine. Yes, you owe these uh, people money. Uh, if you don't pay, they will take your son. Yes, I understand and, and I see your desperation. But in this, all we can do is what you have is, is, is God can turn that around. Hallelujah. You know, I have been in a situation where I have had huge debt of 75,000 pounds. God turned this around. I'm telling you, I've lived this life. That's why I know that the Bible is true. When we keep our eyes on Jesus, when we keep our focus on God, he helps us. He helped us with such a huge debt that I can say that we became debt free within 10 months. Amen. Because God doesn't want any of his children to be under debt. So now this debt is overtaken, this, this woman's heart, mind, soul, everything. But the prophet Elisha wants to help her. So he says, don't worry, don't panic. Because she went uh, to see him thinking she'll come back with a bag uh, full of uh, money uh, and she'll pay her debtors and that, that'll be the, you know, the, the, her problem will be over. But instead, she, he sends her back. And now he says, when you go back home, go borrow all the vessels, pots and pans from your neighbors, whatever, just borrow them and start filling them uh, with the little oil that you have. But before you do that, make sure you close the door behind you and make sure you take your boys in the room and close the door. Why is Elisha saying that? Because he wants her to have a personal encounter with God. He wants her to have experience a personal uh, miracle. He doesn't want somebody knocking on the door disturbing or knowing what they're doing or maybe shaking their faith or putting doubt in what they're about to do. So he said go and close the door. So so that's exactly what she does. You know when we when we become born again believers, when we have our peace with God, we are alone and that's when we have we have direct a direct uh, 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 a word from the Lord and he speaks right into our soul, into our heart and that's why the word of God says, you know, he will, God dwells in our heart and that's where our soul is and what is it that we are carrying in our soul? Now she goes back home and she follows the exact instructions that Elijah has given her. So she goes in, she, she tells the boys, maybe when they go and ask the neighbors, oh, can we borrow some bucket or, or a pot or whatever they had and they, and, and they maybe some neighbors are, what do you want that for? Oh, mom's asked me to get this. Maybe that's what they said. And they collected all these pots and pans and jars. And, and after that, they closed the door. So there's the boys and the mother. And the mother starts and she says, well, let's see what happens now. She picks up this little jar of the little oil in it very carefully. She picks it up, make sure she doesn't drop it because that's all she has. And remember, Prophet Elisha said that this is your miracle moment. And she picks it up and she starts pouring. One pot is full. The next one, the third, fourth, fifth, all are full of oil. And she's just amazed. Imagine the look on her face. Imagine the, the tangible anointing that's come upon her. And how many times she's stopping and looking to heaven and saying, you are the true God. You honestly, you are a miracle worker. She's got a miracle. And then it gets to a point where she says, the Holy Spirit is so present here. It's so beautiful. And she says, um, I literally imagine being in that room with that woman and the boys when she's pouring that oil out. And it just keeps coming and it just keeps pouring and pouring all everywhere she looks. There's pots and pans full of oil. And nobody knows about it but her sons and herself. And the prophet said that uh, this provision will come, this miracle will happen. So when uh, all the pans and all the pots are full, she goes to her son, pass me another one. And he goes, mom, there isn't another one. There is no more uh, pots left or there's no more vessels left to fill. And that's when the word of God says the oil ceases, the oil stopped uh, coming from that uh, little jar. Hallelujah. 
but the prophet Elisha had given her the instructions that you go and sell this soil and uh, and go and pay your debtors and whatever is remains remains you just live on that you and your sons so this is a beautiful story of this miracle that took place now the highlight of this story is and we can look at the person who is actually uh, seeing this miracle is a lady and in the beginning it says now the wife one of the sons of the prophets cried out to elisha your servant my husband is dead now who was her husband I did some research and I found out it was Prophet Obadiah. She was Prophet Obadiah's uh, widow. And he was a young person. Uh, he died at a very young age. And he was also, he wasn't Jewish. I'll give you a little bit of background about Obadiah. I was fascinated when I found out that she was actually the widow of Obadiah because she refers to Elisha to say that he was your servant. That because uh, remember Elijah had a prophet Elijah had a school of prophecy and then his um, and then Elisha was his student and then he had student prophet Obadiah was one of them and obviously there was a lot of prophets that uh, were taught the, the uh, in the prophecy school but everybody didn't every one of them didn't become prophet but only those who were called and appointed by God so prophet Obadiah was one of the student of Elisha that's why the, she she knew him so well and she was able to go to him and say, you know your servant, you know how much he loved the Lord. And your prophet Obadiah, I mean, it's, it's wonderful if you read the whole chapter, how he speaks uh, um, the prophecy over uh, uh, Moabite, over Jordan, which is modern day uh, um, Jordan. Let me just tell you a little bit about Obadiah. Uh, the book of uh, Obadiah is, is very interesting. It shows um, uh, the, the, the wrath and the anger, the wrath and, and the judgment that was going to come upon Edom uh, for mistreating uh, uh, you know the uh, the Israelites so let me tell you who he was where he worked and how he got himself into a debt okay uh, Obadiah was uh, uh, was uh, very helpful he he loved to feed people you know whatever he had he would uh, he would shelter them he would feed them and and he looked after people and because he had taken huge debt and due during that time he died he died very young and so what happened was that um, Obadiah because be, having you know died at a young age that uh, uh, his wife had to take all the uh, all the debt upon herself so now she was responsible to pay pay the debt and he had borrowed money and he had taken a loan from none other than the son of Ahab, the king Ahab. And remember his wife um, um, Jezebel, uh, who went around killing, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, so many people and ill-treating people, and how she was oppressing the servants of God. Yes, that's where it was. And what happened was uh, because now that her husband was dead she had nothing to pay with but the husband was Obadiah who had uh, who had left her with this debt and now the debt he owed to was uh, Jehoram which we could be you can read the second Kings chapter 8 verse 16 second Kings chapter 8 verse 25 to 28 and he was the son of Ahab and Jezreel and his brother you know and the brother to uh, Ahaziah and Ataliah Ataliah is a terrible spirit so okay so as we read that he had taken uh, uh, taken the loan from Ahab because he worked in his house he was actually, he did all the admin work, he looked after, he was like a, uh, he did major work in, in, in Ahab's a house. He looked after uh, the well-being of the household and everything was like under his control. So basically they trusted him and he had taken some loan from uh, from Ahab. Uh, and that's why his sons would come and harass him so that they would, uh, uh, they could take uh, the boys away and sell them into slavery and you know Obadiah is, is just absolutely beautiful uh, um, uh, his work and his prophecy uh, and how he helped the poor people he would feed them and uh, and and he knew that he feared God according to the word of God it says that he feared God at a very young age because he was a Moabite he wasn't a Jewish Obadiah was Moabite and he converted, he accepted, you know, Yahweh as his, his God and uh, he became a believer um, in Judaism at a very young age. He was, from his youth, he loved the Lord. And because Elijah had, a, uh, um, had, a, uh, he had students and like I said, and then they, because they taught prophecy and it was passed on to Elijah and Elijah had students and he happened to be one of the, um, 
uh, one of the students. Okay, now if we just look at the at that moment, um, Ahab's son, which was Jeroham, and he was the ninth king of the northern kingdom. Uh, and I'll give you the scriptures you can actually read. He had borrowed money from him, and obviously he had added interest on it. That's why the debt had become so huge, and it was so difficult for him to pay that back. But because she was uh, uh, she was faithful, she knew the Lord. But what's happened to her now is she's a widow. Obviously, all the burden was on her, and the debtors were chasing her. Can you just imagine the situation she was placed in, and how was she going to get out of it? She was a woman of prayer at one point, but because all these things had overtaken her and she even forgot that she was a prophet's wife because Obadiah was a prophet he prophesied over Moabite um, and uh, and but because of her financial just difficulties she just lost interest in 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 reading the word or to apply the word can you place yourself if you you know you can imagine if uh, if uh, it's like uh, 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 things don't go according to plan and then suddenly you're just uh, uh, attacked from every area. That's exactly how Abadah's wife is feeling. But thank God that she, she remembers that there is God that she feared, but at this moment, she does not know how to connect. Could you be in that situation? You don't know how to. You've been running to prayer, prayer meetings, you go to this person and that person, but at this moment, the word of God tells us that though she knew the word of God, she was a wife of a prophet and she, was, she, she had godly people around her. But what was it in her heart? Did she lose that love for God? Did she stop pouring the oil? And that's why the word of God says, be filled with the Holy Spirit every day. The infilling of the Holy Spirit will keep the, 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 the light burning. And that is, that is what, what, when that's missing, we, make, we, we can make a terrible mess of our life. And I have seen Christians who backslide. I have seen Christians who lose faith and they turn to the world and they give up on God. But if you are in that situation, the Lord is calling you just like that widow. She admitted that the fire of her prayer had gone out. She did not, she was so, um, so kind of mixed up in our feelings and she was so burdened so heavily hard pressed down with the things of the things that were going around her family that she could she couldn't see a way out and i i come across people like that who have a lot of problems especially a mother who has got a grown-up son and he's maybe addicted to drugs and he's 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 he's, he's taken it on and and she she doesn't know which way to go though she could be attending a church or you know she's reading the word but she doesn't know how to apply it she's forgotten the power of that word and that's what had happened to this widow she had forgotten the power of god's word so here, here what she does is in in order to come out of this this mess that she's around us she's trying to save her children and that's that that love for her children has gripped her heart and then the fear of the enemy has taken over her her thoughts her life and then the poverty and then the famine and then the shortage of food and everything is just getting her at this moment but now the Lord makes that provision for her. You know, that miracle only stops when we say we can't handle it. It can go on forever. So in other words, when you pray for something that's been bothering you for so long, it could be your son, like I said, I hear from mothers who say, Pam, please from, pray for my son who's addicted to drugs and alcohol and so and so forth. Please pray for his deliverance. And the mothers, they cry out day and night, but they're focusing. I say, don't focus on the addiction that you're, you're, you, that's crippling your son. Focus on God, he's bigger than that. He alone can deal with. So what is it in our heart? Do we have that oil in our, in our soul that can work, that can light up the lamp and keep it burning all the time? Otherwise, it, otherwise you'll just burn yourself out by praying a prayer that, are, that could be just reaching the ceiling but not reaching the altar. But here, when this woman went to the man of God, he saw the condition that she was in. It's genuine, the problem that we are going to be always there, but it's how we handle them and how we tackle them, how we get our miracle like this woman did. So if, you, if you're looking for a personal uh, a miracle, and the Lord says you will have that, and you might need to close some doors. You might need to put some people out of your, your life. You might have to disappoint some people and say, look, I cannot come to this party. I cannot uh, attend uh, the, the ceremony that you're doing. I cannot come to that. You might have to disappoint 
some people, those are the doors that you need to close in order to get your miracle. You are probably too busy entertaining your relatives and, and people around you. You know, there are people that do not worship your God, the God that we worship, but yet people are happy to go and participate in what, in what their gods are doing. That is opening the door uh, to problems, basically. So like Prophet Elisha said, go and close the door. Means put every negative thought out of your head and also don't speak anything negative over the situation. Do not doubt, close the doors of doubt, close the door of negativity and open the door of blessing. And that's why I always say, thank you, Father, for opening the doors of heaven for me and the windows of heaven. And that's when we receive our miracle and immediately it will fill us with the joy, with the oil in our heart. The Holy Spirit will come and he will captivate your heart, your thoughts and he will make things clear and clean and that's what happened to this widow you know she went with an expectant heart she, she knew that she's turning to God she's going to a holy man a righteous man but the Lord is saying the Lord spoke through this this prophet and gave her direction and she followed but we need to stop if we need our miracle we're going to have to close some doors we're going to have to disappoint some people in order to receive our miracle this is your moment what is it that's holding your blessing back look around make a list of things that are interfering in your personal life in your spiritual life are you making excuses when it comes to uh, uh, to, to go to church or or, or to have a uh, to partake in holy communion what is it the excuses that you're making the lord is saying have oil in your heart oil in your soul so that we can continue to see his face clearly he will continue to shine his face if we have oil if we don't have the Holy Spirit, if you don't have joy in your prayer, if you don't have peace, you're just wasting time. But the Lord is saying it's not, it's not worth wasting your time. Come and invest your time in me. So brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you. You know, we could be Christians and believers for a long time, but if our focus is not right, if we don't have oil in our soul, you know, our prayers can be flat. They will have no effect. So today the word of God encourages you and me that be faithful and be anointed, receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit and walk in his majestic power. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God for Elisha that he directed his, this widow in the right way. But thank God that he was, he's a true prophet. Listen to the true prophet. Listen to the word of God and listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You know, God bless you richly. And I was so blessed as I shared this sermon in the church. There was honestly such a silence as, as there was a blanket of peace had come over, as there was a cloud of peace that had covered everyone. And we were just so soaked in that anointing because we wanted our miracle. And I'm sure a lot of us received our personal miracle, miracle of the oil in our soul. God bless you. Take care of yourself. Shalom.